I'm painting a rapier team from Forge World. Um, decided to paint these guys because with the the new rules of heavy bolter switching to two damage, uh, 12 shots of that seems pretty good. So I thought now is a good time as any to uh, to get them painted. So I'm going to start with Iron Breaker. I'm painting these guys uh, as Dark Angels, uh, Heresy Dark Angels specifically, because that's what the rest of my the rest of my Dark Angel army is. So I'm just going to do everything that should be silver to start off. Now these guys are in Mark uh, 2 or 3? Mark 2 or 3 armor. So they have rivets all over them. So there's quite a lot of silver on these guys. So I'm going to knock that out first. And then probably do some red. And then couple other details and we'll pretty much be done. <laughs> These guys usually paint up pretty quick. Just painting all the rivets and silver. Thinking back on it, I would have rather painted these guys with the rivets being the same color as the armor. But I started the army painting the rivets silver. I want the whole army to look cohesive, so I'm going to keep the the silver rivets for the rest of the project. I could go back and repaint a bunch, but I don't really want to, so just going to keep all the rivets silver. That's a surefire way to definitely never get an army done, is to go back and repaint over some miniatures when you don't even have all the miniatures done. Repainting is fine, but you should try to get an army done first and then decide to go back and change some things. If you just keep constantly changing, you will in fact never finish. So, and I, who knows, I may one day go back and repaint a bunch of these guys, but for now, we're just gonna rock with how I started. And before I do the the Dark Angel bits, these guys are going to suffer from looking a tad bit like uh, uh, Iron Warriors, Iron Hands. One of those. Iron Warriors, I think. But uh, once you get some checkerboards and some Dark Angel iconography on them, they're just fine. People seem to not understand the heresy paint scheme anyway, so I always get asked, oh, is that a Raven Wing army? No. I'm sorry, Raven Guard army. No, it's Dark Angels. Oh, they're black? Yes. Really, 30k should be a requirement to be able to be allowed to play 40k. Like the prerequisite. Must have spent X amount of time in your life playing 30k before you're allowed to pick up a Space Marine army in 40k. Might help the meta a little bit. Be not so Marine dominated. Although I say that and the recent tournament results have not been in favor of the Marine meta. So there was a tournament in Australia this past weekend. Where the top three were like demons, Eldar, and something else, maybe? I can't remember. But I assume the codex will change quite a few things, but for now, at least, it seems like some other factions can compete pretty well, so we shall see. But I'm hoping that painting all this Dark Angel stuff in the Heresy Scheme will eventually work out when they decide to finally bring Heresy rules up to the current edition. Don't know if that will ever actually happen, but here's hoping. Oh, 
Alrighty. Oh, I guess I also I should say, uh, the thing, what I did pre-stream was I sprayed these guys black, dry brushed them with Skaven Blight Dinge, and then put a Null Noil wash all over them. That's how I do my black armor. And if you're watching locally, uh, David Rouse is the one who gave me that, uh, that technique, and I've been using it ever since. If you're watching on YouTube... Just know there is a guy in Georgia named David Rouse, and he's the one who gave me the, the uh, technique for how to paint my black armor. So, and even I was talking about earlier how I might go back and change some stuff once I get the army done. Um, the armor is not something I'm going to change. The, the three step of primate black, dry brush it, Skaven blade ink it black I think is a great great system and it uh it gives you some good shades and highlights before you even without really any much effort since dry brushing and ink washing are easy all right I think the silver is almost done on him now move this guy out of the way Oh, we got some more, more silver on his face here. I was looking at this model earlier, and I always turn my my marine mohawks. I always turn them the right way. They usually come the other way, but I'm looking at this guy, and I don't see a line where I reglued. So I'm wondering if this guy might come with the mohawk in the correct direction is pretty exciting or I may have just turned it long enough ago that I've forgotten but I think this guy might actually come with the mohawk facing the right way all these rivets they take forever that would have been another thing to think about when I first started this army is that if I keep the rivets black, save me a bunch of time painting, but I didn't. And so here we are, painting rivets. Okay, just a couple more here. I think are good for this guy. Uh, oh, there's some rivets on his his mohawk. That's how I put my mohawks together with rivets. All right, that should do for this guy. Move on to the the actual rapier here just gonna do the same thing just pick out some details that are also gonna be silver some bolts here basically any raised detail I'm making silver not being super careful about which ones I select I'm just picking some And I was talking to someone about this the other day. Um, he was worried that... Not worried, rather. Um, he was complaining about having to make something symmetrical. Um, a vehicle, in this case, symmetrical. Um, like, so if you pick out a detail on one side, you have to pick it out on the other side. And, well, generally, that is the case. Um, it's something to keep in mind that... I didn't even realize until much few hours later after the conversation uh, that most of the time 
an opponent is never going to be able to see both sides of a vehicle at once. So, like, if I paint this side and I put a bunch of silver, and then I go on this side and I don't pick out any of these middle details here in silver, they're never going to be able to see, like, I can't even see both sides at once. Unless I was, like, I don't know, unless I had corner vision. So, if you are talking about insignificant details like screw heads and stuff, you don't have to worry so much about being symmetrical. Because... And this is for gaming, of course. If you're in a competition, judges are going to notice that stuff. But for gaming, as long as the major things are symmetrical, you're good. Like, if I paint just one side of this barrel in a color and not the other side, that's going to be noticeable. But small things, it's not a big deal. Not a big deal. So let's see, I'll just do this side, I guess. This is the, uh, this is the part of the process where they really start to look like iron hands warriors man i really get those two confused they start to look like the black armored guys with silver trim and i promise they aren't they will turn into dark angels shortly If at the very least, even if the even if the addition of checkerboards don't turn them into Dark Angels, the addition of the Dark Angel symbol on their shoulder pads will for sure turn them into Dark Angels. Alright, uh, I'm going to paint these ejection ports silver. At least I assume those are ejection ports. There, it's a weird spot for an ejection port to be, but whatever. I guess who knows how guns thirty-eight thousand years in the future work, or twenty-eight thousand. I guess he's technically a heresy guy. I think that'll do for the silver on the gun. I'm just going to do some rivets on this guy now. I'm going to try to do this guy not as accurately necessarily as the other guy because he is standing on the gun. So the gun will do most of the work and showing off the paint scheme so this dude doesn't have to be perfect. And of course, he won't ever be perfect, but he doesn't even have to be tabletop perfect. He can have some some more speed applied to him and not... I won't lose anything in terms of the model. This appearance... There's so much trim on these guys. It's ridiculous. What chapter? Uh, Dark Angels. Eventually. As I was saying earlier, right now they could pretty much be anything, but... Not anything, but they could be one of several things right now. But uh, they're going to be Heresy Dark Angels. Heresy Era Dark Angels, I should say. Not specifically Fallen. Just Dark Angels with black armor.
they will be joining the the Countess Belial army, which will be be led by the new uh, Lionel Johnson model, who's going to be my Countess Belial, and then. Hopefully, 30 Deathwing Knights. I haven't actually checked how many points that is, but I hope to be able to run 30. I actually don't even know if they can be in squads of 10. I assume they can. Um, but hopefully 30 of them. And then some fire support behind them. In the form of a couple rapiers, at least. And who knows what else. I may, I may be already be out of points, for all I know. So we'll have to start there. But I think 30 Deathwing Knights will be funny. I have no idea how practical it is to put 30 Deathwing Knights in reserve, though. Is the problem. I may already be well past my limit. I don't know. I'm guessing I probably am. But we might have to knock it down to 20. We shall see. Just get these last couple details on the back of him, and then we'll be done with the silver. You said it right the first time. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Alright, that'll work. Well, I'm going to do a couple of silver details here. I'm going to do this. This bit on the what I assume is the aiming device. And I'll do these things here. I guess I'll do the shells in silver also. Why not? That'll be fine. Being a little messy with this because it's not the end of the world. All right, that'll do it for the silver. Thank goodness. I'm ready to be done with that silver. Uh, now I'm going to do some red. I'm going to start with... I'm going to start with Wasdaka red. Am I... No, I'm gonna not, I'm gonna skip the Wasdak red. I'm gonna start with corn red instead. That'll work out better in the long run, I think. All right, so then let's see what we're gonna do with this. So first, I'm gonna paint their bolter casing here. Or I guess his bolter casing. He's the only one with a bolter. I think the other guy has a bolt pistol, but... Come back and fix those rivets later. The technical term for that is the tube thingy on top. Trust me, I'm a scientist. That's fair. I'd agree that that could be called a tube thingy on top. I don't know what, like, is the guy going to crouch down and look through it to aim the heavy bolter? I feel like that isn't the way he's going to fire that gun, so. Tube thingy on top works for me. Seems like you wouldn't even need a marine to fire these things, honestly. A servitor would work just fine. But what do I know? All right, and then this part of the case, like there. You don't want to know what goes in that tube thing. <laughs> oh, great. All right, uh... That's good for that bolter. Let's see what else needs to be red on this guy. Oh, 
The mohawk needs to be red for sure. And uh, I've talked about this. I don't know if I've talked about it on this channel, but in uh, on the beginner streams, I've talked about the idea of that two things that are made of different materials should never be the same color. So, for instance, it's pretty much a foregone conclusion that the mohawk and the bolter are not constructed out of the same material. So they should never be the same color, but I'm going to highlight them differently so they will end up looking like different colors. So that's all that matters. Um, I think I'm going to do the, the lightning bolt thing on his chest in red. An aiming laser, get your mind out of the gutter. Wow. That's true, it could be a a laser array, so he's not actually looking through it, he's just seeing where the laser is pointed and pulling the trigger when it's pointed at the enemy. But I just don't know. Um, I think... Do I want to do a checkerboard on this guy? I don't think I'm going to do a checkerboard on this guy. Do a checkerboard on this thing, maybe. We'll see how I feel. So first I'm going to do the casing of the gun. In red. And this, this guy's just held on to this paint handle by a magnet, so being careful not to drop him. I meant I was going to put a tap in the bottom. I was rather I was going to tap a hole in the bottom and then just screw this in, but I couldn't find my tap set it's somewhere in this in the tool shelf or the tool area of chaos, but I could not find it. So we're going low tech today. But discovering that the uh, the Citadel paint handles are um, are threaded with the quarter twenty bolt was a life changing moment, which I also then realized is the <laughs> it's the same thread that a uh, that most I won't say all that most camera mounts are, so you can can knock some strange things together with that knowledge, knowing that your camera mount and your paint handle are the same thread and receiver can do some, some funny things. I don't know why you'd ever need to do such a thing, but if you so choose, you can screw your paint handle into the top of your camera mount, or into the top of your tripod, rather. It wouldn't help you any because it'd be sitting on top of your tripod like this, but <laughs> you never know. If that information helps you one day, you're welcome. These damn bolter casings. All right, that'll work for that. And then what am I going to do about... I think I'm just going to do a really simple checkerboard right here on this part of the, the rapier. So I'm just going to draw a more or less straight line there. Ooh, knock my dude over. More or less straight line. And then fill in the checkerboard. Not being super precise. You absolutely could be super precise. If this was competition painting, you may want to be. This is not, though, so I'm not going to be. There we 
go. That'll work. Not the greatest checkerboard in the world, but you can easily see that it is a checkerboard. So I'm just going to do the same thing on the other side. And draw a relatively straight line down the center. And then just fill the checkerboards in. I actually don't know what a... Are the sections of a checkerboard just called the squares? I wouldn't be surprised if they have some fancy name. Squares just doesn't seem cool enough. Looks good from here. Thank you. And that's all that matters. From a couple couple feet away if it looks like a checkerboard then it'll sell like a checkerboard all right there we go got a simple checkerboard on him I'm just gonna see if he needs any red anywhere oh yeah I'm gonna put some red on his same thing on his chest of the other guy Checkers, not chess. True. True, true, true. All right. Now I'm going to try a new technique uh, that I've never tried before. And I'm going to take some race bone. Dang. Camera. You wanna, there we go. Race bone. And I'm going to dry brush it onto an area. And then I'm going to apply contrast paint on top of that dry brush. I have no idea if this is going to get a result even resembling something I want. But we're going to find out right here, right now. So let me get some wraith bone on my brush here. Wipe most of it off. And then I'm just going to dry brush it onto these treads here. I'm going to dry brush it pretty heavy. Because I do want the contrast to cover it up. Make sure to get all the sides and over here. It will give results, that's true. <laughs> Whether it's the correct results, I don't know about that part. But if this works, then I think I'm going to start using this technique more often. Because it seems like it would be... In my head, it's going to give really cool results. That's going to look awesome. And if that pans out, then I'm going to do it more often. If it doesn't pan out, I'll do it less often. Or what I'll actually do if it doesn't pan out, I'm going to go find a painter who's better than me and be like, hey, try this. <laughs> See if you can make it work. And then if that works, then I just need to get good. And then we're all set. I don't think this guy has anything on him. Nope, he doesn't. All right. So now I'm going to try that. I'm going to go for snake bite leather, I think. See what that does over this color. Assuming I can find some snake bite leather. Aha. Uh -huh. Snake bite leather. Give it a good shake. Find a brush to apply it with. Actually, I'll apply it with the same brush I just applied the dry brush with. And I'm just going to apply it straight over the top of this. So here we go. Just making sure not to get in it too much anywhere else other than the treads. All right, 
I'm not sure about my color choice, but the technique itself is working how I wanted it to. I think maybe I might go with a darker color in the future, but for right now, trying to get this couple painted in an hour, I'll keep this color and it may grow on me. It also may change when it dries, but I think as far as the technique goes, I think it worked out great. Just got to figure out how to brace this guy now without touching the <laughs> contrast paint. There we go. Not too late to give it a coat of simple green. Oh, you're right. That's true. That is true. That's one of the, like, the, I don't know if it's an unsung quality of contrast paint. I think everyone knows this. It's just one of the great things about contrast paint is that you don't necessarily need to strip it if you're going to paint over it. Because it goes on so thin that painting over it is almost like just painting over a layer of primer. Alrighty. That'll work for that. There we go. Grab a little bit of that. There we go. Oh, there went that. All right. So then, what's next? Oh, I'm gonna paint the paint the belts and stuff on these guys. And for that, I'm going to use Gorthor Brown. So this is the brown I used on all my Marines of this army so far. So it is the brown I will continue to use. And if you need a good brown for anything, I urge you to. Start living the Gorthor Brown life. You will not be disappointed with your choice. Defeats all other browns in terms of its inherent brownness. It's just the perfect brown. There are no other browns like it. Not even the Cleveland football browns are as brown as Gorthor Brown is brown. And they're pretty brown. Let me tell you. They're pretty much as brown as you come. Although they're not really. They're kind of orange. But whatever. And that's why Gorthor Brown is better. Because even the, Cle even the Cleveland Browns are actually orange. That's the tagline. We did it. Choose Gorthor Brown because even the Cleveland Browns aren't brown. And they're also in the AFC North, and that means they're, they're technically competing with the Steelers. And that makes them terrible. So, anything to take a shot at the Cleveland Oranges, I'm happy to do. Every other brown will leave you wide open to airstrikes. It's always a good thing to keep in mind. If that's even if that's your only decision making paradigm do I want to be protected from airstrikes Gorthor Brown is still the brown that you should choose let's get this guy's belt and then we've got a holster back here Alrighty. I think that's it for the brown. Oh, nope. We got one more pouch here. One more pouch right in there. Good. I 
Alrighty. So there's that done. Now, what's next for these guys? I guess I will do some more null oil on these guys. Null oil. Just gonna do this on the silver parts and on the red parts probably. Just to dull them down a little bit. I'm specifically not going to do it on the mohawk though. And I'm also not going to do it on the small, just like a single rivet on a piece of armor. I'm not going to do it on that. I'm going to do it on the, the bigger silver chunks like the shoulder pad here. I'll just cover that whole shoulder pad there just to blend it in. There we go. Do it on his face. And that'll work. And then on this guy... Do it on the the top tubey thing or whatever we decided to call it. On the shell casings or on the shells, I guess. Do it up here. Man, that is a wiggly gun. <laughs> it's supposed to turn, so that's why it's wiggly, but dang. That's wiggly. I'm going to do it over the checkerboard to blend it into the armor a little bit better. There we go. And then his shoulder pads. There we go. And then this thing on his face. I guess the supplementary aiming device. Or maybe the laser's infrared and he can only see it by looking through this. I don't know. Oh, then I'm gonna get the thing on his chest. Alrighty. That looks good there. Then I think I will do I'm going to highlight the Mohawk. I'm going to use some Wild Rider Red Focus. There we go. Wild Rider Red for that. I'm just going to do a basic uh, edge highlight here. Just going to go across the, the edge. Should have it on camera. It's kind of the whole point. There we go. That'll work. Now it'll look different from the gun. All right, we're coming up to the end here. I'm gonna take a different silver. So Iron Breaker's what we used originally. I'm going to take some Iron Warrior, I think, if I can find any. No, oh, it's right here in front of me. Some Iron Warriors, silver this time. And sort of like a dry brush, sort of like a overbrush. Just gonna put it in a couple places just to break up the, the black. So sort of on the edges of things. So I'll do it back here a little bit. It's not necessarily in any specific spots. It's just sort of around to to break up all the black. Give it a more of a gunmetal feel in some places. So like on the bolter. Places like that. Just on any details that didn't necessarily get touched by other things. That's him good. Do it on things like this. Do the. Do it on these. Okay. 
Okay. And get the other side. Like I said, this isn't anywhere specific, just sort of out and about to mix up and break up the black in some places. Go heavier, go lighter, it doesn't really matter. All right, so we're almost done then. Just a couple more things to do. I am going to do the Dark Angel symbols now, I think. And I will use Vampiric Highlight for this from Reaper. Just get some on a, on a something here. Uh, what do I have? I have one of these. Just get some out on some form of palette or something. And then I'm just going to paint in some Dark Angel symbols. So I'm going to put one on this guy's shoulder. So I'm just going to do a simple cross for the sword. Looks good. And then... Do some little curvy triangles here. Fill them in. Just make sure they're completely filled in. When did the do they get the greenish tinge? Uh, lore wise, I don't know. Uh, if you mean when do these specific marines get the greenish tinge? Never. But lore-wise, I don't know exactly when. I just know that the green is to commemorate their planet that blew up. Because it was at one point covered in forests. However, I don't know the specific time that that happened. Um, I'm going to do some wings on the front of this, too. Not the full symbol, just the wing part. And then the other side. There we go. It's not the greenest tinge of the warp overtaking them. Well, it could be. But their official reason is to commemorate their planet. But obviously, if it was the greenish tinge of the warp, they're not going to tell you that now, are they? So. And I'm just going to come back in here and do the little separations of the wing. Or the wings. I'm not being too precious about this, just something to hint at a Dark Angel symbol. There we go. And then I'll do it on these wings also. Ooh. Paint's a little too wet still. That's okay. Not the end of the world. Wow, the end of this paintbrush is something right now. Since I like to keep secrets like that. Yep. Oh, like they'd be able to keep a secret like that. Yeah, you're probably right. They wouldn't be able to do that. Silly me. Alright. That's close enough. At least hinting at some wings on the front there. 
Just going to put a Dark Angel symbol on the other guy now. Same thing as before. Just a little cross here. There we go. And some wing. Some good wing action here. Excellent. Paint is really watery today for some reason. Must have not shaken it enough. Or it didn't dry my brush off well enough after the last color. One or the other. Either way, I cannot put the rest of those, the details of those wings on yet. So I'm gonna ink the, the leather here. I'm just gonna use, because it happens to be available. I'm gonna use Agros Dunes. Just gonna put that over our Gorthor Brown. And then actually before I do that, I'm gonna leave the leave the aggro students out, but I'm gonna do some eye lenses real quick. Just gonna put a white dot it or a white line in there. Just fill them with white. And then I can come back with a color in a minute. I don't actually remember what color I did to eye lenses in this army. But I'm gonna do them green on these guys. Just as a Dark Angel thing. Why not? I guess I'll do these lenses also. Forgot about the lenses on these things. Got a lens on this? Yeah, close enough. That'll work. Alright, now that aggro students I got out earlier, I'm now going to put it on the Gortho Brown. Wonderful. And on the other guy. All right. Good. And then let's see how dry this is. Dry enough, I think. Just in case, nah, it'll be fine. So I'm gonna go back to Corvus Black to do the little wing details on this set of wings. Again, not being, I should probably have it on camera though, not being too precious about it. There we go. That'll work. So we're almost done. Don't have too many steps left here. I am going to... I'll do the eye lenses now. I'm going to do them in Warp Lightning. The best green of the contrast range, in my opinion. Warp Lightning. It's dark green, but it's still bright enough that it doesn't just get lost in the shadows. And it contrasts with the red even better. There we go. He's got some green eyes now. Get this other guy. And get these lenses we painted a second ago. There we go. And the last one here. Wonderful. Alrighty. And the very last thing, I'm just going to take some Mephiston Red, slightly lighter than the corn red we used earlier. I'm just going to do some really, really, really quick highlights on some of the red bits here. So, like, the skull on his chest, the casings in a couple places. Is the new Necron Nuke Your Eye Screen a contrast or technical? Uh, it is technically labeled a technical paint, not a contrast paint. I have so far only used it as if it were another member of the contrast family, though. 
Um, I think the only difference is that it does not have a matte medium in it. Uh, it has a semi-gloss or gloss medium in it. I don't know if that's the reason they chose to give it the distinction of technical versus contrast, but that's the only difference in the two things that I have noticed. Just a couple touches of things there. I think we'll call that a day. There's, there's your rapier team all ready to go. Um, I have a bunch of bases for these guys already built, or already made rather, so I'll just have to pop this guy off and put him on one of those. I have no idea where those are right now though, so <laughs> I'm not going to do that. Um, but I have a, I'm not even sure I have an example laying around, but they're like a sort of a dark Martian color with some green tufts on them. Pretty basic stuff, but that is that. So thank you everybody for watching. Uh, I will be back on Wednesday over on the main Galactic page doing some beginner stuff. As always, I'll say maybe a dragon because there could be a dragon. You never know. You never know. Um, it's possible. But uh, if not, I'll be painting something beginner style or a different game or maybe a board game or who knows. And then Friday, I'll be going back to work on the game mat, hoping to get it finished. I'm going to work on it some this week, some stuff you've already seen, basically just more of that stuff. And then hoping to get that finished the end of next week. We'll see, though. Might be longer, might be shorter. Who knows? But again, thank you, everybody, for watching, and I will see you next time.